Welcome, everybody. You ever feel like your life is just too complicated? There's too much family drama going on? You don't know who you love sexually and who you're related to? Sometimes it's both. Welcome to the attic. It's Macy's Peasies. Hi. Hi. Here we are. Here we are. I'm um, not going to lie, we're not in the attic. No, it's uh, under weather yes. right now. I mean, we are on a second floor, so... We are. Yeah. Um, I will only subject myself to the elements if you're going to look at my beautiful visage. Yeah, it's f- <laughs> it's bit bitter. It's a bit bitter. It's here. a bit bitter. It's basically the opposite of the bay. The you. A be you, be me. I be me, and you be you. It's a great... Wait, That's a great way to introduce yourself. Start. I'm Katie. Things. I'm Tia. And here we are at the VCs Pieces Podcast. Da, da, da. VCs Pieces Podcast. We don't have a thing to sing, but we will. Gonna anyway. do it anyway. Yeah. So. Cha 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 cha. So. Whoo woof. Uh, Pearl in the Mist is the most. Is the book we're reading now. We done read it, and that is the most. By the by, clitoral name. Oh, it's so clitoral. <laughs> I'm trying to find the pearl in the mist. It's so misty. <laughs> so <laughs> misty. It's hard, hard like, to really there's like, pinpoint where there's that pearl like is. Labial splooshes. Well, it's like the oyster. Yeah. Yeah. So. You're trying to get in your clamshell in this book. <laughs> Clamshells have done been got into. It's a Spoiler clammy, alert. clammy gumbo. <laughs> I'm playing like on the stage, clammy gumbo. <laughs> oh, so sloshy, <laughs> so slimy. Oh, huh. Anyway, so. hey, welcome, dear listener. <laughs> oh, welcome back, <laughs> book two. Uh, welcome back for the first time, for the sixth time, for the eighteenth time. I think it's episode eighteen. I think it's, I think it's great. I am reading the step back. No, nope. back flap. Back flap. Mm. For the second book in the enthralling Landry series. I don't doubt. And I am. Fate whisked Ruby from a simple life in the Louisiana bayou, but her new riches bring more treachery than happiness. Even after her year as a Dumont, Ruby still wonders at the splendor at the family's New Orleans mansion and rejoices in the love of the father she has never known. But true happiness in her new home is as elusive as a swamp nest. <laughs> yes. Ruby must carefully avoid a venomous enemy, her stepmother Daphne, who cringes and sneers at her backwater upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> what the and, Ru- and Ruby's every effort to befriend her twin sister Giselle, especially since Giselle's crippling accident is answered with a bitterness and vicious backstabbing. So idyllic Greenwood, the exclusive girls' boarding school that her father has chosen for his daughter's senior year, seems to promise some peace from the conniving Daphne. And maybe even a fresh start with Giselle. But Ruby's kind mm, isn't welcome at Greenwood. (laughs) And the legendarily strict headmistress Mrs. Ironwood... Plots with her stepmother to make life miserable. Meanwhile, <laughs> it's so long. so long. It doesn't look it's like it's going to be that Meanwhile, long. Giselle is on a mission to break every school rule, leaving Ruby to suffer the humiliating punishments. But Ruby doesn't lose hope until a terrible tragedy leaves her alone in a world that never really wanted her. Ruby will have to summon every last ounce of her Cajun strength to reclaim her home. Whole future and the happiness she once knew. They're so long. They're so long. It doesn't look like it could be that long. When you right? Look at it. You're just like, oh, it's words. Oh, it's <laughs> it's a, just words. It's like a four by five. It's like a four by five card. Mm. Mm-mm. Sips and words. So, Sips and dips. But I'm not. We're gonna dip in. Yeah. We're gonna dip in the. Okay, Sips great. And dips. I want now. I want dip. Oh. Okay. Sorry. So we open... Well, I think we're just opening with the prologues now. Yeah, well, kind of. It's a letter with Paul, which is, like, basically a version of a prologue. It's just... Our to letter to Paul up. is basically, yeah, just to catch any new reader up. Remind oh, an old yeah, reader. If you, if you missed the first one, 
already with the chorus. <laughs> I know the cat you hear tonight is a different one. Is my cat Penny, and she's grim. She's what? She's grim. She's grim. So she's grim. Um, for she's grim. For she do not know. <laughs> Maybe if you taught her to read, she would enjoy. Um, Noted in the prologue, Giselle very whiny about her wheelchair. (laughs) She was like, me, me, I hate this wheelchair. Me. You're mean. That's what that's what it said. That's what it said. And we also learned that she like wants Paul. She's like, Paul, did he write about me? I think it's just because she wants to literally make out with everybody. Or just like troublemaking. We're talking about Giselle now, by the way. Yeah, Giselle. Yeah. She wants... Sorry. Yes, that was confusingly stated. Giselle wants Paul. Um, also, she will die before she goes to boarding school. She will literally lay in her bed and die. She's gonna die. Stateth her. Um, yeah, it's a lot, a lot in the beginning is the, like... They're bringing the reader up to speed, and we're prepping for the school, and we're going to the boarding school, and boarding school, boarding, boarding, boarding school. Yeah, Giselle's being completely impossible to insist on bringing all of her shit. Literally all. Like, all of it. She's like, I need all this. They and they're like, but you're going to have a... Uniform. Uniform. She's like, no, I will not. I need special accommodations. Mm-hmm. Which I have a hilarious point about later, but not now. Oh, God. She brings so many things, they need to hire, like, a van to follow yeah. the car. But no, the the van they bought to drive her around in because of her wheelchair, mm-hmm. and she was like, I will not ride in that thing, though. So they used it to pack all of her shit. Um, so before they leave, Nina gives Ruby, a, like, a dime with a hole on it and a mm. string. It's lucky. She wears it's some good gris mm-hmm. gris to wear around her... Gris gris. Gris gris to wear around her ankle. Very greasy. Um, and Bo shows up, like, just Hold in up, time. right before that. Oh. Just oh. one second before that. One second. They have a family dinner. They, Breakfast. They have a family <laughs> event. Um, and Ruby noted that family dinners sure have been a bummer since my stepmother tried to commit me. <laughs> yeah, that's a little awkward to ch- chit chat around. Yeah. Which made me chuckle. So I thought I'd share it with uh, our singular listener. Bo's goodbye. I'm not really feeling the magic, by the way. Like, sometimes you feel like you really felt like when Christopher wanted to fuck his sister. <laughs> You really felt it. You didn't feel it as much as she did. <laughs> oh, oh. Poking, poking <laughs> through his pants. Um, I'm just like, I'm not feeling it. I don't know. I feel like they're just like a cool couple. Uh, sure. You know? And I feel like I felt it with Don and Jimmy. Mm-hmm. I feel like I felt it. Bo is like, oh, I love you so much. And I love you so much. And Ruby's like, but we can see other people. Was she saying that? I she thought- was. She was like, it's fine. We can, it's fine. Like, just like be free. We can like check out some things. She definitely said, but we can see other people. I thought that she was saying that more to him because Giselle was like, he's going to find someone else and he can't be nailed down. And so right. she was like, oh, I don't want him to feel nailed down. Uh, I did not read that as her actually wanting to see other people okay. as much as. It, I think that contrast is, was, uh, I was like, me, me. Um, he gives her a locket. Yeah, the um, one of the only pieces of jewelry that exists. For some reason, <laughs> I I thought that it was gonna have his nude pic in there. Uh, that that's like a gift. Lockets and charm bracelets are the two things. Yeah, lockets, yeah. charm bracelets for this age group. Yeah, later on is the cacophony of jewels. Oh yeah, diamonds. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. this is is the uh, this is the one you get. They uh, he the, says something like, "Oh, you could wear it there because that way any." Any other boy would have to pass through me to get to your heart. All right. It, it like, <laughs> new, <coughs> it's, like, on the tip of her cleave. Yep. Just the tip. Just the tip. Giselle has no real friends, LOL. No. It's noted that no one comes to say goodbye No to one shows up. And she's um, like, that's fine. They all suck anyways. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that already Giselle is at, like... Aunt Fern levels of intolerable in my mind. Oh, God, she's the worst. I get, I get they're setting up the character. So annoying. So annoying. Because she's like, well, it can be me. And then, like, Ruby and Pierre are like, all right, like, it's fine. And she's like, me. It's like literally everything. Yeah, they're always side eyeing. Like, anyone around Giselle is always side eyeing the other person that isn't Giselle, being like, oh, fucking Giselle, am I right? Yeah, she's the worst. Um, so well, they they roll. They have to take it. It's like a couple hours or something. Yeah. I don't know. They don't really explain how long it takes to yeah. drive. Did from... I miss something that I also someone somewhere in here in their car ride? 
I made this note. It said, did I miss something that would lead Ruby to implicate Daphne in the Uncle Jean situation? I didn't miss anything. No one said anything about that. No, there were... me. No, there were, like, allusions there in the last allusions. book. Okay. Allu- allusions? Al- yeah. Allusions with an A, yes. Yes. Allusions, allusions. In, the, in the last book mm-hmm. about, like, she thinks he had something to do with it. It seemed like maybe, like, you know, Pierre was going after Daphne, but then, like, Jean was very... Aloof. No, he was very, like, sexy man. <laughs> sexy That's man. what people wanted him. Um... So they're rolling up on the grounds of Greenwood, this special school they got to go to. And, um, for rich Creole, or rich people. I did one of my things where I found something that didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. So, and what I have, page 34, see so if it's a mass market paper book back, that should be a... Uh-uh. I saw some button bush along the foot of the fence. It's dark green leaves gleaming around little balls of white. Little white balls of white. Mm-hmm. Why? <laughs> White balls of white. There's little gleaming around little white balls of white. <laughs> That's all. That's great. The headmistress name is Martha Ironwood. And they call her the Iron Lady. They call her the Iron Lady. They uh, are assigned to the Luella Claiborne house, and I noted that because Luella is a repeat name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. There you go. Um... I wonder if Giselle ever wheels herself. Because right now she's always like, wheel me here, wheel me there. A little bit, but she doesn't prefer it, for sure. She doesn't prefer wheeling herself? No, because she's like, oh, no, yeah, I yeah. will not I mean, use yeah. my arms. I might get muffled to own. What? Uh, why did I screenshot this? I don't know. <laughs> okay, hang on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Mrs. Penny. Oh, Mrs. Penny. We have Mrs. Penny, the house mother. Yep. Yeah. A short, plump woman with gray hair woven around her head in thick braids. She wore a bright blue and white dress over her stout body. When she drew closer, I saw she had innocent blue eyes, a jolly wide smile with thick lips, and cheeks that ballooned to swallow up her small nose. Yeah, I made note that uh, they got to the room and most everyone is described pretty unflatteringly. She's a friendly pudding, though. Yep, so that's Miss Penny, and then they go on to Jacqueline. Uh, she had a narrow face and a long, pinched nose above a small mouth with thin lips that became pale rubber bands. Also, there's Chubbs. Kathleen, about our height, but much wider hips and shoulders. Her nickname is Chubbs, because she hides snacks everywhere, literally. Horse- like a- <laughs> Wait, so, so you took some good notes. I wrote Chubbs, and then I wrote Horse Face Large Bosom. Yeah, you missed one. <laughs> we got a Samantha described as adorable, but with a face full of dimples. So, uh, <laughs> how many can you have? Like a stiletto with... walked across her face. Yeah, what the like heck? a golf ball? Yeah, <laughs> a face full of them, but not like a full of not dimples. like an Edward James almost beige orange peel. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> um, <laughs> Victoria, large, hard features, and was pale to the point of looking sickly, but she had a large bosom. Wasted on that horsey face. <laughs> All white girls. Yeah. All white girls. And, no spoiler yet, but I did, I want you to see. All white girls yeah. and, quote, they don't let I know. them in. Yeah, I wasn't there yet. They don't let them in. So, Giselle completely freaks out because they go into their dorm and she's like, this room is too small, what about all my things? All and, the things you were told. Not to and everyone on. was like, you don't need things. And she's like, I need things. And, uh... No. Like, it. she's just horrible. And then the last girl, Abby, hasn't shown up yet. She has her own room, she's and Kate wonders. Mysterious. You don't think she's... At which Jacqueline responds, no, they don't let them into Greenwood no matter who protests. This is a private school. It's 1964-ish. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, when Giselle is going on about her things in the uniform, she can't wear the shoes because they'll hurt my feet. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? She says the shoes are too heavy and will hurt her feet. <laughs> oh, my God. Which she cannot feel or move. So good. Uh, Abby rolls in. She's the mysterious and beautiful friend trope. Yeah, she ends up being the prettiest, therefore the nicest, therefore the one Ruby is going to be friends with. Absolutely. I also noted that Ruby, um, actually wrote Ruby has a hard on for Abby. Yeah. And often when she is describing Abby, describes her as though she is describing like a VC Andrews uh, protagonist. Oh. So like, you know, her beautiful eyes and peachy creamy, I don't know, complexion. 
it was this very like slow mo, very like a slow mo reveal. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they have a they have to go to this assembly, which Ms. Ironwood is telling them like, and they keep talking about like you haven't read your packet, haven't you read your packet? They get packets and get it's packets. the rules and the regs and the everything that you need to know at Green Hood, Green Quakers. Um, so, yeah, Giselle is just an asshole at the assembly doing, like, side talkings and yes. stuff. And Miss, uh, Miss Ironwood has steely eyes and a granite jaw. Mm-hmm. Like a mortar and pestle up in there. Yep. Probably Twin Hills of Concrete as well. Yep. Timid Samantha's doing the wheeling now. Yep. Oh, yeah. She's like, oh my god, you're so cool in a wheelchair. Can I push you? You're so cool. Uh, yeah. So, like, they almost get in trouble a bunch of times because... Giselle's just talking shit. Yeah, she's like side talking and the, those steely eyes descend upon her. And, like, <laughs> and then, yeah, G Samantha just lives up Giselle's ass now, like immediately. Yes. I mean, I, you know, there's a there's a thing that uh, the, the Queen Bee, I've never read, there's a book about like Queen Bee, it's called Queen Bees and Wannabes maybe, I don't know, about uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so, so you know, some people have a, a strength for sniffing out weakness. Mm. You know, so Giselle sniffs out weakness. Mm. Um, I, I wrote... I wrote accidentally Abby. I don't know why. I <laughs> don't think that's a thing. You probably finished, didn't finish writing something. <laughs> accidentally Abby made me try. I don't know. Well, sounds like, it sounds like a, like a Broadway play from like, that's like a mid, like a, <laughs> like mid sixties, early seventies. Uh, no sneaking out. Womp womp. Cause mm. Giselle's like, fuck this place. I'm going to sneak out. I'm going to wheel out. Um, Giselle's also like, don't y'all fuck? Yeah. Yeah. She, like, brings the dirty talk to the quad. There's there's apparently a, a quads and quadrants and so many students, but we only know about these these few. Yeah. In the quad. The quad. Oh, speaking of quads, uh, Ruby and Abby go off a walking. Because uh, at some point... Oh, like, I think... Um, <laughs> okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. I have um, don't y'all fuck or rub one out. I guess she was talking about masturbation, maybe. Progressive. Okay. Uh, and then I said, oh, man, Giselle has to do chores. She won't sit for this. Nice. Because she was like, I can't chores. <laughs> and and also, Ruby, so Giselle's, like, freaking out about everything, and Ruby's just like, whatever. Yeah. She was, so, and Giselle's like, my stuff has to go in the room, with the room in it, with the one person. And she's like, do you, she's like, well, or you need to leave me, Ruby, and like, let me have my own room. And she's like, I don't care. She's yeah. Like, you want to leave me? And she's like, I literally, whatever. Like, I literally don't care. <laughs> she treats her like a toddler, which I enjoy. Yeah. She's like, all right, whatever. She's like, fine, I don't care. I will. Are you going to stop yelling? Or no, you, neither I'll way. I'll give okay. you your own room. You want to leave me? I don't care. Whatever you want. <laughs> Seriously. It's That's so fantastic. Bad. So, and so Giselle's like, I can't chores. And Ruby's like, I mean, you could clear a table. Yep. And it would be fine. But uh, she basically uses the wheelchair to not do anything. No, no, to do anything except for be like, help me. So anyway, Ruby and Abby are besties. Yeah, so while, um, because Abby is super nice and just is like, sure, Giselle, you can move all this stuff you don't need into my room since I'm only one person. Oh, and beautiful. She may have really nice. Yes, of course. Um, her eyes were aqua, I believe. Okay, another she, blue. She had not, aqua. not dull brown. No, of course not. <laughs> Ew, <laughs> disgusting. That would be disgusting. I know. Um, so that's when, like, they have this little conversation, and I think Abby says something like, "I can't believe you're twins," and she's like, "Yeah, neither could I when I met her." And she was like, "What did you mean?" Because like, no one at the school is supposed to know that. Right. Like, it's a secret Cajun. <laughs> she's a secret Cajun, and so Abby's like, "I have." Secrets too, and so they yeah. go off a walk in later. And um, Ruby's like, "Well, what's your secret? You don't look like you got any diseases." <laughs> <laughs> you ain't a leper, nothing. <sighs> so we find out that Abby is a quadroon, which means that one of her grandparents was black. Secret quadroon, and, uh, and that's why her boyfriend, her boyfriend's Confederate ass parents, won't let them see each other. It's really not the representation I've been hoping for. I know. <laughs> it's one step. <laughs> oh. Kind of. I mean, we, anyways. So they come across a sexy night Indian. Sexy pawn shack man, Buck Dardar. <laughs> His name, y'all, okay. dear, dear listener. 
This man's His name, name is Buckskin Darder. <laughs> His name is Buck. He's there to fuck. He wears buckskins. He wants to go skin to skin. Buck Dardar. Dar dar. Buck Dardar. Buck Dardar. Buck Dardar. Buck Dardar. Buck Dardar. They're like. Buck Dardar. Oh, did you want to get your cat barfing on Mike? We don't have a choice. <laughs> it's happening. Well, she wheezing. <laughs> oh. it, that's Sparrow. <laughs> Is it getting picked up? No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Aww. So, so, so they're like walking and it's like the sun is setting on, there's like a body of water. A pond? A pond. And like, first of all, they were like, he had like, it was one of those VC phrases like Indian black hair. Yeah. So at first I didn't catch it. I thought it was just like an eye rolly kind of like offensive term. And he's like shirtless and shoeless. <laughs> and he's like, they call him Mr. Mud. Yeah, because he's like, my name's going to be Mud if you don't get out of here, which means, like, he's going to be in trouble. And so they're like, hey, Mr. Mud. And then they, like, run away all tingly. Oh, my God, yes. So tingly. It's yeah. like like a cartoon when there's, like, those lines. Those, like, electricity lines. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty funny. They just, like, so, giggle away into the, back to the dorm. Yes, I got a text message from Tia that just says, Buck Darder. Dardar. Dardar. Buck. 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 Sparrow. <laughs> Buck. <laughs> oh, look, my note says, oh, fuck, his name is Buck. <laughs> Not just Buck, but Buck Dardar. Uh, Never heard that surname before in my entire life. Daphne pulls a grandmother cuntler and calls ahead with the slander. Oh, my God, I know. So, like, Miss Ironwood is, like... Hey, send Ruby to my office. My fucking office. And she's like, okay. I'm not in trouble yet. I'm the good one. Doesn't matter. And yeah, she's just like, "Uh, so you're like, I heard about your shit and like, we don't take kindly to your kind here. Your Cajun-y, spicy kind. And also like. You're like a Takis. You're somehow like a good student. Um, And I heard your sister Giselle was kind of wild, so make sure she's a good student. And it's also, your responsibility. it's your responsibility. If she gets in trouble, you're both getting punished. And mm. she's like, "What? What the actual fuck?" And she's like, "Yeah, sorry, she's I don't in know. a wheelchair, so yeah, you're responsible." And she's like, "I literally can't convince you to do anything." She's like, "Well, you better fucking start trying then." Yes, it's oh, a it's awful. It's a convenient plot device to kind yeah. of keep because that would be a if we're being like these people are real. That would have been great for Ruby to kind of just be like, you know what? I will succeed in this. I am good with structure. Mm-hmm. I'm smart. Go fuck yourself. But it's a nice, convenient little plot device to tie them together in the yeah. conflict. Um, we meet the beautiful and personable art teacher. Yeah, Miss Stevens. Ruby is like, why isn't she married? Yeah, Ruby wonders like, why right someone so pretty, sweet, and talented wouldn't consider marriage as, a, as another alternative. You know? To having a career that she enjoys. 1977. <laughs> Uh, 63. I wrote 63. Four. Is that correct? Because, well, no, it's 64 because they're fucking 17 now. And there was a time jump. I get so scared. We know scared. the I year. I get so scared when you start hollering years and ages at me. <laughs> well, they said they were 17. Yeah. There was no 16 moment, which I feel like would have been huge for twins. That would have been. Especially like, for Giselle. Like, yep. Mm-hmm. So what, whenever their 16th birthday happened, it didn't happen. Wait, it would have been in like um, October or some shit, right? <laughs> um, Hold up. All I'm right. confused by my own notes. I feel like Great. there's some autocorrect here. So I wrote, Giselle has an instant click, Rolling Throne. Mm-hmm. Go ask her what's in her panties. What? Who said that? 2-8 switch? What? What? I don't know. But at one point, uh, Giselle says their maid Wendy was uppity cringe. Okay. Great. Uh, Buck is young, tall, long legs, narrow waist, and hips. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna go to tea. All the new girls go to tea with what the fuck is her name, Mrs. I don't know. I'm not there yet. Oh, great. Keep going. You, you say more things. You say more things yeah. now. So, um, so there's a bad prank with Jackie's report. Mm. Like she can't find her like uh, report. I, it was like geography or history. But she had been working on it like before school even started, and then she couldn't find it, and they were like, uh. And, of course, Ruby's like, fucking, what did you do with it? It's clearly... Giselle. 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 And she was like, fucking get it right now. And um, Samantha was like, all right. She, like, reaches under the couch, and she's like, uh, 
it was right here a second ago. And then you hear just Jackie like screaming because it was under the dresser, like with water poured all over it. So Jackie moves out and in with Giselle and then Ruby moves in with Abby. Uh, Page 91, Jasmine Perfume, because apparently that is... Miss Cla- Claiborne, Cla- Claiborne's, Claiborne's favorite. Yes, Claiborne. Mrs. Penny douses herself with jasmine perfume because they're going to tea with Miss Claiborne. Claiborne. Mrs. Claiborne. 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 Um, and she's like, she's like, don't talk about the Civil War. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been a bad hundred years for the Claibornes. What with the lack of slavery? Um. For them. Uh, noted all the clocks are stopped at five past two in the Claiborne yeah, Mansion. Two o five. Five past two. Two o five. Two o five. <laughs> wow. I wrote Claiborne all over the place. Okay. Giselle tries to sass Miss Claiborne and gets sassed right the fuck back. Yeah, that was awesome. It was great. Uh, I did a screenshot for their tea. What does this say? <sighs> The Greenwood is one of the last bastions of the moral fiber that once made the South the true capital of geniality and grace. Here you girls will get a sense of your tradition, your heritage. Heritage. Dog whistle. In other places, especially in the Northeast and the West, radicals are invading every aspect of our culture, thinning it out, diluting what was once pure cream and turning it into skim milk. So like, pure creamy southern ladies. Too creamy. much cream in these books. It's too much. It's so creamy. It's too creamy. I don't want secret quadroons. I want out and proud quadroons. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Ruby's like, I ain't gonna take a pee. <laughs> Help, I gotta piddle. Take a piss? Oh, I hate that. I'm gonna say that. So she finds some sort of butler person and is like, hello, bathroom. Hello. And is like, this way, madame. Mademoiselle. Ma'am, and Ma'am so Zell. then she comes out the bathroom and it's like, what is this mis- mysterious piano music? Yeah. And follows it down the hall like a cartoon of uh, following a scent whiff of a pie yes. on a windowsill. Good one. Ooh, Excellent. Diddly, and uh, it's a, oh, so she goes in and there's a man like, hello. <laughs> hello, who is that? <laughs> Why does he talk like that? I don't know. Because he didn't talk to anybody. Uh, apparently he, he talks to no one but um, but Ruby. But Ruby's like, oh, hey, I didn't know you were here. And he's like, ah, one of those Greenwood girls. And she's like, yeah. And he's like, I'm an artist. And she's like, me too. And he was like, oh, my God, really? And she was like, yeah. And then she's like, anyways, cool piano. And he's like, all right, bye. And then she's like, yeah, I just talked to this. I went down the wrong. Blind piano man with a sensuous mouth. (laughs) And everyone's like, my God, Lewis does not talk to anyone ever. He is blind and has melancholia. He is so melancholic. He is melancholy and infinitely sad. He is a melancholonic. Oh, if you like melancholonic, <laughs> I'm getting caught in the rain. Sidebar, I hate that song. Okay. Do you know why? Because it's about infidelity. It's about infidelity. It starts out, the first line <laughs> is, I was bored with my lady. Yeah, you wrote a fucking song about it. Just leave her. They each took out personal ads looking for other people. And then when they met up, they're like, ah, so it's you. No. No. I did know that. About I that. hate that song. She has so many cheat. men's. All right, who? Because hmm? Ruby, because hmm, yes. Ruby Tuesday does. Because there's, she's like handsome buck derder. <laughs> there's uh, Boo. And now there's like sensual, sisly mouthed, <laughs> sensuously mouthed Lewis. Yeah. Oh. Um, r- so many men's. Um, Miss Stevens, they have a painting date. Yeah, it's really cute. They, she takes her out to the river. They do a paintings. Oh, because uh, Ruby and Giselle can't le- leave grounds. You need a permission slip to leave grounds, and they do not have the one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ruby tells Miss Stevens all the things, and Miss Stevens is like, oh, because uh, she's like, what's up with this fucking Lewis guy? And everyone's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Sick. And uh, Miss Stevens is like, oh, it's what 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 is called a murder suicide. Yeah. If I can say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She was like, oh girl. <laughs> um Yeah, apparently yes. like Lewis's mother started having an affair with a younger man. And um so Lewis's father smothered her to death with a pillow and then killed himself. 
Lewis saw this as like a 13 year old ish and then went into a stress coma and then came out blind. Trauma blindness. Um, I also think that Miss Stevens needs to learn some boundaries. She's like, we're sisters. Call me Rachel. I'm just putting that out there. I think that this was like one of her first. She seemed new at the school, she too. She seemed pretty green at Greenwood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty one at green and green. Uh, 30, question mark, year old Lewis wants to sup with 17, question mark. He's 31. Lewis. He would like to sup with this teenager. Yeah, he convinces his grandma, Gla- Grandma Claiborne, to invite Ruby to dinner. And she's, like, pissed about it. But she does. And he has Cajun food prepared. Is it which- a secret or not a secret about her being Cajun? I was very confused at this point. She told him that she was from the bayou because he could he noticed her accent. Okay. All right. I was a little I was like, yeah. so no one's supposed to know. I know Miss Ironwood knows. But are others supposed to know? Is it no. a secret? I think it's a secret. Not secret. It's a secret to everybody she doesn't tell. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, like she yeah. told Abby, it's she told gener- Miss Stevens. Except yeah. it as a secret until she yeah, starts telling people. So confused. Um, wow. So this, this, I, mm. (laughs) um, so, so if you've seen, if you've seen Dude, Where's My Car? (laughs) Have you seen Dude, Where's My Car? One time, a thousand years ago. So. BC, maybe even. (laughs) Before car. (laughs) Before you had a car to dude, to Dude, Where's. Not funny. So, 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 not to bog you down with the plot line of Dude, Where's My Car? But at one point, there's these uh, sexy lady aliens, and there's like an event at the park for blind children. There's aliens? Shh. Okay, there are right, no okay, questions. Okay, okay. There are sexy lady aliens, and the blind, there's a blind boy, and he's like feeling her face, and then he goes down and like starts like stroking and honking a boob, and she goes, Is this. Normal, and he goes, Oh, yeah, this is how blind people say hi. So oh, I thought, yeah, okay. Lewis is like, Let me touch your face, and she's like, Okay. Well, he's like, Listen, I uh, I wrote this piece of music for you after I saw you for a second, and she's like, For one second, the music made me go through the bayou like a fish and a bird. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Let me feel you, and she. She is, quote, afraid to say no. Yeah. And he honks a titty. Yep. He's like, I can tell you're beautiful. May I touch your face? And she's like, I guess so. And he's like, may I continue? And then and he's she's like, she's oh. like, I, I felt like I couldn't say no because he's the fucking lady with the Yeah, nephew. he 100 did like a sad boy grope. He's like, I am old and I don't know how about, about how to honk. And he <laughs> cannot stop doing a honk. He can't stop. He's like, Zip, zip, whoop, <laughs> honk. Um, and also, here's a passage for you. I couldn't stop with the screen. I was literally dying and screenshotting as okay, I went. Okay, Lewis, we shouldn't. It oh. was as if I had slapped him. He not only pulled back, but this time rose from the stool. No, we shouldn't. You should go now, he said angrily. I didn't mean to. To what? He cried. <laughs> Make me feel like a fool? Well, I do. I'm standing here aroused, Aunt I here. <laughs> and one glance told me it was two. Look at my bone on. Uh, Meinst mice, bone on. If I can say that. <laughs> you <laughs> cannot. <laughs> Meinst bone on. <laughs> Please don't. Meinst bone Can you on. not? My. Um. <laughs> So my yeah my we, favorite part of okay, this so whole like, event. <laughs> I know it's, it's so bad. Where is, where it's is, so bad. Where is it? Where's the fucking okay? Hold on. Ah, <laughs> uh, sh- oh, zing, zing. zing. <laughs> it's electric. Boogie 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 boogie. boogie, 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 boogie. Honk. Uh, it's like a goose when a goose goes honk. That's the sound of a titty being honked. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so before that, like, when it first went to the Honkins, because he says, your skin is so soft, can I go on? <laughs> can I glam on there? <laughs> my throat felt tight. My heart began to pound. I was confused but afraid to deny him. He seemed <gasps> so desperate. 
Yes, I said. His fingers moved down to the border of my collar and followed it to my cleavage. Oof. I saw his breathing quicken. Ew. He ran his hands Ew. over my breasts, <laughs> my bro- turning and pressing his fingers as if he Ugh. were a sculptor shaping them. No. His hands moved down my ribs to my waist and then back up again so his palms flowed over my breasts. Nope. Then suddenly, he pulled away <laughs> them away as if he had touched an uncovered electrical wire. <laughs> well, no, you did so, <laughs> oh, no. so when I read that passage, I was in Virginia uh, visiting my boyfriend, Chris, and I read him that. Who? Chris. Have I met him? Chris, yes. Okay. Yes. Doesn't sound real. Okay. <laughs> Fictional. That's a running joke. Um, and so then the rest of the weekend that I was visiting, he kept being like, ah! <laughs> it's ah! like pretending like he was electrocuted. Electric titty. Um, it, 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 <laughs> I, all I can do is think, like... Boogie, boogie, boogie. <laughs> I was afraid to say no. Yeah. And I feel like Niederman somehow stumbles upon these r- extremely real-life thing that women face. Yeah, absolutely. The the displacement, if that's... Of power mm-hmm. in, a, in, a re- in any relationship. I was afraid to say no, so I just let him go. He yep. was sad, so I let him honk. Yeah, it's, they, he seems so desperate. Don't who am that. I to deny? Don't do that. If you're you not comfortable, you are, you you're are you. you. Deny if you want to. Deny if you, you're you. Deny if you want to. Boom. You're you. you. Deny if you want to. You. We're so deny if you want to. I thought um, we were gonna keep going. So, anyways, Giselle tattles about Ruby doing an art with her teacher without a permission slap. And Miss Ironwood house arrests her for two weeks and also is like, don't seduce my nephew, you ho. She gets in trouble and has icy tears instead of burning tears this time. I yeah, I don't. Sure. Lewis is enraged that the forces of Greenwood are keeping a 30-year-old man from the 17-year-old student. Yep, he is. He's just a big old tantrum and convinces his aunt to let Ruby come for a visit. Oof. Uh... Oh, my God. So, oh. <laughs> so yeah, he's like, gun, 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 gun. here's my patio. Cool. And he's like, here's my room. And she's like, wow, it's really weird you have no pictures of your father. Who did a murder? <laughs> like, what? Uh, and that just was really weird to me. Like, of course you would have no pictures. Like, oh, God. Can I read you my notes? Yep. Here we go. <laughs> Wow, G. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, wow, G. Really weird he has no pics of his father, eh? Oh, no. Is it mommy playtime? Oh, no. <laughs> so Lewis was molested by his mother, and his father beat him for it. Yeah. So he's like, I was so close to mommy, and mommy would come through the adjoining door. Ruby, go to the door and be mommy. Say, yeah. Lewis, are you okay? And I was like, oh, no. He's like, and sometimes I pretend like I was crying just so she'd come in. <laughs> Ruby's like, I guess that's fine. And he's like, and I would lay up my head here. And she would touch me here between, betwixt my legs. Ugh. He didn't say that, but he, I'm telling you, dear reader, that's yeah, what happened. Yeah, he, he moved Ruby's hand to his, betwixt his legs. Betwixt. Betwixt them. Yeah, he was like, I would just like nuzzle her tits. Oh, and then she'd honk, honk my donger. Honk a donger. Um, so anyway, that did a happen. Yeah, he just talks about mommy bad good touches and then <sighs> then cries himself to sleep. And she's like, can't get a go. Hold up, I have further she information and out. questions about this. Okay. He says at one point she tried to make another boy her son. Yeah. That was like, that was the affair. Yes. I didn't really, yeah, okay. Yes. Um, and so by the way, he can see now after honking a titty. Yeah, a little bit. He's like, oh my God. If I can honk some more. <laughs> I can see light, so... Bonk, 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 bonk. If I could... Boink, 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 boink. I could just, like, stick a thing. Oh, no, fingies. Um, but that's, like, a lot, by the way, dear listener. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So, that's a little bit of incestual molestation, murder-suicide. Just, just like... It's just, it's just not even... It's, that's not even a main plot point. That's happening to a secondary character. I know! Off in the distance. They're like, you know what? There hasn't been enough of incest yet in this. Yet. Um, (laughs) Hold on, I have to cough. That's okay. (coughs) Giselle is suspiciously nice to Abby. How very non-nefarious. Yeah, there's a social for Halloween in which which some boys come from a boys' school. And... Rosewood. Rose tip. Um, Rose, Rose tip boys... Um, 
And Giselle's like, put on this, like, white satin ribbon. It's going to look so good with your... Because you're so tan all the time, if I can say that. You're so tan. And she's like, cool. Um, she's like, I will wear this. No Thank one you. asked her to dance, though, even though she's the most beautiful mm-hmm. one. No, because uh, Giselle was like, oh, my God. Susan Peck's honky brother, Jonathan, from Rosewood, is going to ask you to dance. But then he asks, who does he ask instead? Rubalicious. Her body's so rubalicious for he, babe. And she gives him a big old sass. It was great, but I was always like, how many boy interests are going to happen in this book? I got there a little bit later than you, but yeah. yes. I was like, there's so, so many, many boys. Dicks a plenty. <laughs> she was just slap cockfighters. Uh, <laughs> hey, welcome down to Ruby's. Dicks a plenty. I got lots of dicks. I got engine dicks. I got blind dicks. I got... I got Nolan's dicks. I got rose tip dicks. You come down. I got to Ruby. dicks that are my half brothers. No, uh. I got incestual dicks. You can come down the road. Ruby dicks are plenty. You want dicks? I got them. I don't need them, but I got them. She needs none of these dicks. No. Oh, uh, wow. Anyway, so um, I wrote here, which was interestingly prophetic. Getting a real Carrie vibe. <gasps> I know. Yeah, me too. It was like creepalicious. Like there was a lot of like, but no one's asking. Abby to dance, and then Ruby kept being like, I'm tired, but my friend Abby would love to dance. Yeah, and, and they were like, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, you know what? I'm too tired to dance. I just hung out with Abby. Fucking squad. I love that. Yes. Squad goals. Yes. Girls over pearlescent dicks. Um, the the quadroon shoe drops. Yeah, somehow Giselle found out that Abby's a quadroon. It made all the boys not dance with her, but all the go- girls vote for her as party queen. So that she like in have- Carrie. Yeah, exactly. So she could announce her heritage. So somehow, like Miss Ironwood is like, and the person who's gonna announce the is wheelchair. The dance girl. queen is her. And Abby's like, oh, cool. So she like runs away from the dance and crying into the night. Woofity woof. The term mixed blood appears. Yeah, come on. It was ninety what when this was written? No, I don't know. When did we? Well, I guess we didn't stop. But like, when did we start trying to not be assholes? Um, when did some people try to stop not being assholes? I mean... This is from 94. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Abby runs off into the storm. Giselle's very dramatic about, like, being in a wheelchair, I guess. She's like, oh, I can't follow. I'm in a wheelchair. Uh, she runs into a storm. And, like, Ruby's like, my friend is out in the storm and I can't chase after her because I'm I have grounded. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I don't have a permission slip to leave. I don't have a board. permission slip. Uh, to I look think, for my I friend. I think Miss Stevens goes into her Jeep. Yep, mm, she goes looking. <laughs> into her Jeep. And uh, Fuck. that's going to come back later into her Jeep. <sighs> it's not a Subaru. <laughs> so she goes, yeah, so she goes off looking. No one finds her because apparently she like hid for a bit from the rain and then went to the city somehow and called her parents to come pick her up. And uh, they show up the next day to move out her stuff. That's the next one I have. Are you, do you have anything before that? Okay. Uh, but so, uh, yeah, I'd be super sad about. Yeah, I actually didn't know any. After I wrote, Abby ran into the storm and she exited my notes. Yeah, so she's like sad. She comes to get. She's stuff. super sad yeah, yeah. and like so she packs for That's Abby right. so that her parents can just take her stuff and go. And her parents are kind of like, "Well, this fucking sucks." And she's like, "I am not the same as my sister." And like, "Yeah, okay, Abby said that you weren't." And so then she's like, she's "When can I car. say goodbye?" Yeah. And they're like, "She's in the car." So like, they get to have a little walk, and she's like, "I'm not hiding anymore." Yeah, she's like, "I'm gonna go somewhere and just be myself." So like, whatever. This place sucked, but like Aww. now I think my parents like finally agree that, like, trying to keep it right. a secret is more harmful. Yes. Which was, that was a nice moment. A little bit. And so then Ruby's so excited, like, things are coming up. She's like, oh, that good, sucked that Abby left, but friend. I'm so excited for Bo to visit, and, like, Dad's gonna come on Wednesday. Aww. She's talked to him a few times on the phone, and he's feeling like this. <sighs> yep, 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 yep. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna read my note. It just says, Daddy's dead. Should have known because he was coughing at one point. <laughs> he coughed it a couple times and sounded weak. So daddy's dead. Yeah, he does have a heart attack. And uh, then Giselle's an asshole. She's like, oh my god, it's sick. We can move back home. And she's like, don't you care? And she's like, whatever. And then Daphne was an asshole too. Shocking. Yeah, everyone's just an asshole. The, it notated that the undertaker has dry teeth. <laughs> <laughs> just like skulks in like the like mouth Mr. Burns. is a very moist environment it's like is he just like teeth to the wind at all times <laughs> either the have Undertaker m- had dry teeth 
but probably a moist brown tongue. <laughs> That looked moist brown. <laughs> Dry teeth. <laughs> How? Teeth to the wind. Teeth to the wind. Da- it's all those spirits just dancing over his little cl- clangers. What do you call teeth? <laughs> Chompers? Chompers. <laughs> clangers. Whammers? His, his fucking dick whammers? No. <laughs> no. Um, Daphne is fully into her wicked stepmother role. Oh, yeah. And I'm so into it. I love her calling Daphne at one point a little fool. Who did she call a little fool? Giselle. Daphne called Giselle. Ah. She's like, you little fool. And I'm like, <laughs> she's a little fool. <laughs> <laughs> um, her man friend, Bruce, is a lingering kisser. Yeah. Um, I feel like Bo comes back because even in, in retrospect, Ruby knows she gave in to his desires. I can't stop. Ruby has, it seems to me Ruby has no agency over her sexuality. She gave in. She felt bad. She let someone. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. But he is cool. Like, he's someone who isn't an asshole to her. Who? Who's Bo. Bo. When he finally shows up, he's like, Bo. Bo. And uh, he takes her to visit Bo. Uncle John so she can tell him that Pierre has died. Yes, and. Because uh, Daphne's like, no. Fuck that guy. Don't fucking go tell him. He doesn't even know what's happening. And Ruby's like, no, but I visited him and like. It's not a completely empty upstairs situation. Down in front. Yes. Um, what I enjoyed when they're going to see Uncle Jean, Bo says, are you sure you can do this? And she says, no, but I feel like I have to. Yeah. Which I enjoyed. Again, For some reason, I keep in my mind comparing Ruby to Kathy. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. Kathy was, she was like a, a raw emotion. Mm-hmm. And she would have been like, it's, I need to, and I'm steely. But Ruby's like, I don't know if I can do yeah. this, but it's the right thing to do. Yeah. So I like that. I like that, too. Um, he's in a less expensive It's room. weird, though, because they were like, he's been moved to his new ward this morning, but, like, he's been handling it not well for a while. Like, like this is only a couple da- days after Pierre has died. Yeah. But apparently, they're like, yeah, we got him all set up in his room, new, new room this morning. Is what, it- what color was the wall in the ward? What? Dull brown. Oh, wow. Dull brown. Dull brown. So, but then they're like, oh my God, yeah, he doesn't take care of himself ever since he moved here. This morning, like, they, they went into a stupid time vortex that made zero sense I'm to sorry. me. And I'm I was sorry upset. That happened to you. I was upset. I was upset. But then he gets pretty upset hearing the news, of course. Like, why wouldn't you? Yeah, but I don't know. There was another thing where Ruby was like, yeah, it sucked, but like, he, he did know what was going on. And, yeah. And then she felt bad, and then Bo was like, you... You definitely you, did the right thing. You did the right thing, because like, now he's gonna know why Pierre isn't yeah. showing up. Like, like yeah, that sucked, but like, you don't... It'd be worse if he thought that his brother abandoned him. Correct. Um, so, Daphne, in my mind, kind of looks like a Sharon Stone. <gasps> Ooh, yeah. Um, and she says at one... She, Ruby's like... Why'd you secretly move him? And she says, I never do anything secretly. I love, yeah. I fucking love a villain doing villainy shit. Right? Yeah. She Lean leads, into it. She leads, anything, anything that, that a, a villain doing villainy shit is very drag queen to me. I can uh, see yeah. any queen. Yes. Like, lip syncing her lines. I never do anything in secret. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> love it. i um, for that. She's barred from the wake. Yeah, she can't. Won't like Ruby go to the second wake. Yeah, whatever. Two, two day affair. Um, she because already, she went to yeah, she already experienced the Undertaker's dry teeth. <laughs> and she's like, but I have to. That was really horrible. Because Ruby's like, I feel like I'm the only one who misses him and gave gives a shit and like, mm-hmm. like I feel like I should have like questioned him more when I thought that he wasn't feeling well. But like I thought I was gonna see it. Like she's got all this guilt. And she don't need to. No, she you doesn't, know, but she do. So she's barred from the wake, but who creeps on up to say hello is Bedroom Boo. Bedroom Boo. Bedroom Boo. I can't boo. I can't. Bedroom Boo. <coughs> Wants to bust a bow inside of her. Wow. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, Bedroom Boo. They get busted. Oh, yeah, because Giselle was there. She's like, maybe Bo will comfort me. And, uh... So then she was like, wheel me up, Bo. And he stops to say hello to Ruby. They may have do a smoocher. I don't remember. Just a, like, no, they were like really talking because she I was like, yeah, I'm so depressed. And then Daphne comes busting. She's like, like ah, you guys were basically fornicating. And she's like, I- Bo was like, fucking chill, Daphne. I love that he calls her. He's always called her Daphne. Yeah. Her first name, which I enjoyed. But seriously, she's like, everyone's got full clothes on. They were literally just sitting next to each other on the bed. They she's weren't like, even like, ah. they weren't even laying down. 
<laughs> and she's like, I knew you guys were doing nothing. Everyone was vertical. Yeah. <laughs> Except Giselle. Um, she was still, uh, well, she was still the same vertical as them sitting down. Uh, so Torso is vertical. The funeral. Daphne's performing her grief. I, I think it's. Like, oh yeah, big yeah. time. Like just like like a like a, a dab. Just a dab of and a, like a lace a squ- handkerchief. A of a hand. Oh a no. Squoze and a nod. Paul comes. He's a broad-shouldered man now. Yep. He shows up right at the end of the funeral for hugs, basically. Um, Daphne's like, "Ew, that can't come in my house." Mm. And then Paul's like, "That's fine. Like, I just want to come check it out. I'll drive back. Bye." Um, yeah, he's a broad-shouldered man, but do we ever get a hero with narrow shoulders and wide hips? Nope. It's always broad shoulders, narrow hips. Yep. Can I see, like, an inverse triangle of that? Uh, <laughs> probably not from this. In true Christopher style, Paul says he hasn't seen anyone else. Yep. He can't stop wanting to incest. Um, It's Bruce this and Bruce that. <laughs> No one gives a fuck. And then, like the day after the funeral, Daphne's like, "You're going back to Greenwood." Yes. And Giselle's like, "No." Giselle like tantrums and pouts. And what I enjoy because we hate Giselle is like Pierre would have been like, "Whatever." He would been, you know, feelings make my daughter nice. Da da da. But uh, Daphne does what we all wish we could do, and it's just like, "Fuck off, you're going." Yeah. Yeah, she said something. Oh no, that was later. I think. Never mind. Yeah, there was a there was a zinger a little bit later. I don't know. I then wrote, ugh, Lewis. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so when they get back, Giselle accuses Samantha of rifling her stuff while they were gone and makes her move out into Ruby's room. Yes. Which used to be okay. Ruby and okay. Abby's room. So, huh, get your chart and your string out. <laughs> Abby's gone. Ruby was solo. Now Samantha's there and Giselle's solo. Yeah, Giselle's got her own uh, own room. and Samantha's she, out of the click. Yeah, like, no. No, you're so horrible. And then... You know, Ruby comes home one day to find oh my God. Samantha like Sonic. weeping so hard, shame tears in her bed, and she's like, "What's up?" And then she's like, "Why are you naked, bud?" <laughs> hey, buddy. So apparently, Giselle and Co made Samantha hump a pillow. Is this a sex crime? I think so. I think it is. Yeah. They made her fucking hump a pillow. Yeah. So they were like, they pretend made her pretend it was Jonathan Peck, right. Deborah's brother, and Susan. Susan's brother, whatever, and some fucking person made her like kiss it and make out with it, like, and, and fucking, like, like do everything you want. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, like, this really reads like a sex crime. It's ex- exploitation. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. They made her fuck a pillow, and she's like, "It's called- fine though. I'm back in the club." Like, oh my god. Did heart. someone call Benson and Stabler? I hope so. Get Casey Novak on this. Oh my god. What about Alex? I mean, how you gonna get Alex? Um, Giselle is like all of a sudden very independent and very secretive and very tired and locking herself in her room. Very tired. I'm wondering at this point, like, is she sneaking out somehow? Oh, you're way ahead of me. Uh, I, then I wrote down Lewis's description reads to me very uncanny valley. Do you know the term uncanny valley? Yeah. Okay. Like uh, the 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 um, it's like too realistic and it freaks like, you out. Yes, like uh, the Polar Express. Yeah. Boo. Boo. Yeah, he uh, calls Ruby up to visit and tells her he's regaining his sight because of her. He's like, I really, if I can just be codependent on you for like a very long time. <laughs> he's like, we've seen each other in person twice and. Honk. You have changed my life. Oh, three, thrice. 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 <laughs> thrice. <laughs> seen each other. I mean, you know. Anyways. <laughs> Thricely. Um, so then all of a sudden, like, Ruby's gonna have an expulsion meeting because a teacher saw her in the boathouse with Buck Dardar doing illicitness. Ruby was like, this is a case of mistaken identity. Yeah. <sighs> Come on. But I have no idea how it could have how, happened. How is, how is could thine have it, been? It could have, it must have been someone who looked kind of like me, but if, definitely not someone identical if, to me. If, only there was someone else who looked like me. <laughs> then maybe we can figure <laughs> out. <laughs> figure out this fucking shit. God damn it. God fucking damn it. Buck bucking in the boathouse. Yeah, I wrote like, yo, can you still walk now? Is Buck Dardar sneaking here out of the window? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> he was, they were bucking in the boathouse. Yeah, they were Dardaring. Um, <laughs> so there's a whole, yeah. There's one a the, trial. One of the fucking teachers is like, so, okay, okay, okay. So Miss Ironwood is like, Buck Dardar. I showed him your picture, and he was like, yep, that's the one I, d- I done fucked," and, oh, and signed off on it, and was immediately fired, 
Which also, I mean, oh, fair. But he was like, that is the photo of the person that I done fucked. Yep. And was whisked away. <laughs> which should happen. Uh, and then the teacher was like, yep, I saw it. And I saw Ruby. And uh, I also wonder if Mrs. Penny could have testified to the time she returned because she was with Lewis honking his eyesight back in. <laughs> <laughs> if I can just... Honk his eyesight. Honk. Is that a nipple? Yeah, I don't know. It, was like, it felt like a radio dial. I mean, but then you like pressed it to make it start. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know electronics, clearly. <laughs> Um, so it's all going very badly. <laughs> then I wrote Lewis to the rescue. Ugh. Yeah, Lewis shows up at the expulsion trial because uh, Miss Stevens was like, hey, can I come in and help, like, be a character witness? And she's like, no, I'm already Fuck in you. trouble because you were trying to be nice and a nice art teacher and neither of us realized that I couldn't go out with you on a school thing. And so she, like, snuck Lewis in, basically. And he's just like... She was with me until nine, whatever, and not at the seven, whatever, at the fucking did happen time. <laughs> and then Miss Ironwood is, has, just has to dismiss it. She's like, let's all agree to disagree. At first she was like, how do you know you're blind? And he's like, it's 4.22 p.m. by your clock on your, th- not dashboard, desk. And then, uh, but also, his eyesight is not that good, and Misty was like, whispered the time at him. Yeah, like, right before they went in, she he was like, what fucking time is it? Because yes. he, like, knew that she was going to be like, you're fucking blind. You're blind. How would you know who's next to you? Like, How would you know whom is doing a fuckings? Which is just hilarious, because it's like... They're cousins, by the way. Right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Miss Ironwood and, and Lewis. Lewis, not... Let's well, be I, clear. So uh, that was a whole to-do. Um, and I, then I wrote, OMG, I can't with Mrs. Gray. It was motherfucking, obviously, Giselle. Yeah, I wrote, Giselle, deaf secret walk in and trick bunk dar dar and thinking she was Ruby. Next note, yup. <laughs> Giselle can walk, lol. Very, very Vera about it. Mm-hmm. Because Ruby's like, oh what God. the fuck? And she was like, well, yeah, people want to do stuff for me. She like, gets so much easier to be, to be doted on. I don't have to do chores. People are nice to me. I can wear what I want. Like, <laughs> And then Ruby's like, well, hope you had fun, because fuck you. Yep. <laughs> and then she's like, well, you don't want me to tell everyone about Miss Stevens and the gay panic. Yeah, she's like, um, and she's we like, well, what would you have why to tell She yeah. wants to work at a girls' school, if I can say that. And, and that she's not were... married. <laughs> Lesberific. <laughs> In her Jeep, if I may. <laughs> <laughs> Vagina mashing, biscuit to biscuit. Um, and Ruby's like, I, yeah, she's like, ah, whatever. She's like, don't, she's like, don't do that. Don't be a shitty person. And she's like, I am a shitty person. She's like, fine, fine. fine. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Pretend you can't walk. Cool for you. Lewis is going to go to Switzerland for I, she's like, Ruby, you ha- oh, oh, oh. So, <laughs> Lewis, if we rewind, when he's honking a titty in his, uh, and he does his, like, weird, like, I was fucking molested incestuously confession the next day or whatever. He's like, I never told my therapist this, but now I can see. (laughs) Connection. (laughs) So now, so now he's like, all right, maybe I should work on this. Um, So he's going to go to Switzerland and get eye treatments or whatever the fuck. Um, And he invites Ruby to have like a goodbye dinner and he gives her a ring and she's like, oh, it fits perfectly. And quote, I have memorized every part of you I have touched. Oh, honk. Yes. <laughs> Can you get her a bra fit perfectly? So I was like, <laughs> I was probably, I was, I was focused on I other stupid I couldn't shit. handle, I couldn't handle the, I have memorized every part of you I have touched. After many, 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 maybe this is me personalizing, but I could not, I just couldn't, she was so uncomfortable. It yeah. needed so many honkins. But not like the that. second time. He was just like, well, a li- I don't know, he cried. <laughs> Anyways, so I, of course, got focused on typos. <laughs> so he has two presents for her, and the quote was, I laughed and untied the tiny ribbon so I could peel off the pretty paper without tearing it. Peel was spelled P-E-A-L, <laughs> like a sound. Like a peel of laughter. Not a fucking P-E-E-L, like when you're peeling something off, like a tiny ribbon. Or p- pretty paper. Anyways, I wrote, it's a honking ruby ring. But then he tells her, he's just like, oh, I'm getting a vibe, right? And she's like, oh, fuck, okay, here we go. And then he's like, I can tell that you're in love with someone else. Bo calls once or twice when they're gone, but Bo's not really in this book yet. No, not terribly much, but like, 
I don't know. I thought that was pretty cool. Like, he was like, yeah, like, you've yeah. helped me. Like, See? after, like, once that moment happened when he was like, I realize that you're not into me. Did you not get, like, a, like a sad boy vibe? A little bit, but I thought he was actually, like, especially um, in contrast to his previous behavior, he was very respectful about it. And he was just like, I hope we can keep being, still keep being good friends. Like, it is because of you that I have my eyesight back, or whatever. And then he plays her Ruby's Symphony and gives it to her on a record disc as well. That he had pressed. Um, yeah, he, uh, yes, this 30-year-old man is very understanding that this 17-year-old student perhaps has a boyfriend her age. <laughs> um, then it's the holiday break, Christmas break. Uh, Daphne's no longer in mourning, and the girls are free to party. Yeah, she's like, water under the bridge, let's start over, be a family, yada, yada, this yada. Bruce, you guys know, uh, Bruce, right? Bruce, Bruce. Brucey Poo. Bruce. I have a suspicion, I was like, I was like, I have a suspicion that her and Bruce conspired off Pierre. Hmm. Because they just keep talking about, like, Bruce was there immediately. They're always whispering to each other. Now Bruce is there constantly. Whispering? Whispering. Whispering. So they're like, oh, and then they're like, oh, we're okay. going to get him married. And then Giselle's I'm like, oh my god, that. look, mommy, I'm my leg. Yeah. So Giselle's like, oh, you don't want me to tell Bo about Louis, do you? Oh. And right, right out the gate, um, Lewis, uh, Ruby's like very upfront about Lewis yeah. and takes the wind out of Giselle's sails. Yeah. Um, She's like, I already did. Daphne comes in with the leaving the table hungry line. Um, nice, yeah. She gets, Ruby gets Bo's class ring, which is notated as a step down from engagement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, fuck, I gotta take better notes. All they wrote was, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay, you guys, there's a part, they have a party, uh, it's Bo, but that's not it yet. For real? Because then I well, wrote, wow, the biggest, not surprise at all, a marriage announcement. Oh, was that after Christmas Eve? It must Christmas have been. Eve? There's, oh, there's like maybe a, there's, it was. Yeah, because they do it on Christmas Day. They do it on Christmas Day. Oh, right, so okay. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, they have like a little get together, and Bo and Ruby do a fuckins, I believe. Mm. Um, and they do a bone. G- Giselle has her... Man, her new conquest is John. Okay, I didn't even write his name down because (sighs) fucking a. She's. (laughs) I hope we wrote the same thing down. No, I didn't write it, but I know. She was like, I guess they they did a fuck. Okay, so okay, there's like party, whatever, and then Giselle and John go upstairs, and then they like uh, Bo and Ruby do a fucking spy the fire. Sounds very romantic. (laughs) Um, these teen bones. And then they, they dress when, they, I guess John and Giselle come back down. And he has to carry, carry Giselle. He both. And uh, I wrote undulating, LOL, because I feel like at some point someone says someone's undulating and it's a very funny word to me. It's a good one. Um, and then, do you remember that song, I Smell Sex and Candy? Yeah. So Giselle comes in and she's like, what are you guys doing? She, like, <laughs> she, like, her, she knows they did a fucking, they were like, what? So I, it was just this very like, what are, you, what, are you, what are you guys doing? What are you doing in here? And they're like, fucking nothing. And then she's like, that's fine. That's fine. John and I will go back upstairs. He loves that I'm helpless. Yeah. I'm a helpless baby. And he was like, ha. Ah. And she was like, I need my diaper changed. Yeah. I, I need my diaper changed. And it is notated that her man is like, fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. I need my diaper changed. No. I pictured him not being like, what? But like, <laughs> I need my diaper changed. I get it. We're talking about the downstairs where sex happens. Not sexy terms. Uh, uh. <laughs> I need my diaper changed means I am full of shit or piss. Yeah. The end. I don't think she had a diaper either. I don't think she had one. She was talking not, about being a baby. No, I know. But it's not, not sexy. No, it's not, not, not sexy. It's not sexy. Not to king shame. That's not sexy. Yeah. No. Sorry. I'm sorry, adult babies. God fucking damn it. <laughs> Sorry, adult baby community. Don't come for me. <laughs> With your diapers and your passies. Your very, your very large stop, pacifiers. Stop. So, then, uh, so then, Christmas Day. Oh, hey, surprise. The biggest not surprise. Engagement. And then Giselle was like, oh my god, mommy, look at my legs. I'm gonna walk you down the aisle or whatever. I've been trying so hard for you to walk. Yeah, she's like, I've been trying. Like, she pretends like she can't walk. She's like, <laughs> like, took a couple stumbling yes. steps. Like, she's like, I stood before, but I've never walked. 
I wanted to walk to you first, mommy. Uh, there's like a stare down between Giselle, uh, between Ruby and Daphne that I'm just loving. They're just like, and Ruby's like, you guys deserve each other. And she's like, yes, we do. <laughs> I just love it. I'm just like, <laughs> a villain doing villainy shit. Yeah, it's great. Uh, she also says that like Giselle and Daphne deserve each other's deceit. Mm-hmm. Fine. Great. It's true. Um, uh, Bruce is gross. Mm-hmm. He's a lingering lurker. Yeah, he He's like comes lingerer. into the uh, Ruby's studio. I hate that he calls her La Ruby. La Ruby. <laughs> so Ruby had promised Miss Stevens that she would like paint her a picture of like when she was on a break, like, and she's like, I'm gonna do it out of the front window of my studio. studio, and like she can see the the garden district. Blah blah blah. <laughs> And Bruce, come, Bruce like, ooze, comes in. He, like, oozes in. He's like, la Ruby. And he was like, yeah, later, when we are our family, I can spend a lot of time in here if I can say that. If I, if I can say that. And she's like, mm. please do not say that. And she's like, cool she's for, like, cool, congratulations. <laughs> Congratulator. <laughs> Congratulator. <laughs> I love that. Um, so then, then there's New, New Year's Eve, yeah? It's New Year's Eve. Uh, the next thing I wrote is a is a bow quote. In fact, it's decided. We'll apply to the same college. Yeah. I just there women. I think as generally in these books have no agency. Or, or no. I I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing it. I'm not not reading it. Mm-mm. Or the protagonist. Sometimes the cheerins do. Once our main protagonist yeah goes through the trials and tribulations of X number of books. Yep. The cheerins <laughs> can can do it. Um, so Bruce is like, we'll apply to the same college. It has been decided. Bo. Bo. Uh, yeah. So, New Year's Eve, Giselle throws a huge razor, like, razor. Uh, Daphne and Bruce are going off to some New Year's Eve party. And, and like, she's like, just be chill. Like, how fucking, I'm not just any mom. I'm a cool mom. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. You guys can have a little party. Like, if you don't know, drink, just, like, don't go crazy. Don't leave the house. They definitely have a crazy fucking man. They smear have party. a fucking crazy party. So, um, Ruby and Bo, like, sneak off to Ruby's room to, to do a bone. And. Yes. <laughs> well, can you read this to our reader, these two lines here? Bo. Bo, we're not being careful. Foreshadowing? Question mark? I wonder. Question mark. I wonder about all this unprotected sex. I wonder happen. about all this unprotected Not, sex. Nothing literally can happen. The house um, gets tore up at the oh, mayonnaise smearing sh- party. They're like, oh, it is on the wallpaper. <laughs> There's just, they had a food fight. Like, <laughs> yeah, like true? Ruby and Bo after having like uh, earth shattering v- love making, come back down because they hear oh, the. Oh, yeah, uh, upstairs is off limits. Oh, yeah, so, oh, God, oh, God. Yeah. So the party just, I was like, Fuck anywhere you want. Do whatever you want. Just don't go upstairs. Which I found fucking funny. Um, so that's obviously why they sneak upstairs. Yeah, because they're like, oh, no one will miss us. This is horrible. Um, they hear the countdown. They're like, oh, happy new year, kissy blip. And then they come downstairs and they're like, oh, okay. There's just kids puking. and Sandwiches everywhere. <laughs> Sandwich. Yeah, there's Brammed a food fight. the wallpaper. Yeah, just all the... All the furniture has been mayonnaise stained to the gods. Ugh. And so Isn't Giselle in the studio? She's in the studio painting John on, on, on his body. I misread that at first. She, and then I was like, oh, she's just like smearing pants. Apparently on she it. was, yeah, just like yellow legs and a black wang. She's like, I had to That's gonna I sting his cool. John that I was a great painter like you. And, and then, then she's like, cool, we gotta get your fucking friends out of here. And it was bad, and then Gis- uh, Giselle was useless. She was like, "Yeah, whatever." <sighs> she also did like a fake, like uh, went like when the party, and she's like, "Here I go, I'm gonna dance for the first time." Look, guys, and like did a attention to me. And she was like, "Oh, look, I barely get out of this chair. Oh, somebody catch me!" I didn't sneak away and do many fuckings on Buck Dardar. <laughs> Buck Dardar, Buck Dardar, Buck Dardar. The next day, she's real mad that Ruby didn't drink enough to get a hangover. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, "Aren't you so gay?" Fuck it. I'm in goody two shoes. Like, why don't you feel like shit? And she's like, because I, I like, I didn't drink as much as you. I remember that time that I that you I had, remember seeing you. You had many more drinks than I. I remember seeing you super feel like shit after you drank. So then I was like, I'll maybe, like I, one maybe one. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and she was like, well, fuck yeah. And um, 
Daphne's pissed and she sends them back to Greenwood. Because of the mayonnaise. Because of the mayonnaise. But it was great. Like, she she was like, because she's always like, I don't want to go. And then she says something like, oh, yeah, well, you're, you're walking miraculously came back to you. Maybe you can miraculously improve your grades, too. <laughs> A villain doing villainy shit. Yes, so good. <laughs> uh, when we return to Greenwood... Yeah. Miss Stevens has been fired for immortality. Being a suspected lesbian. Suspected lesbian, gay panic. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, like, obviously Giselle has something to do with it. But she was like, I wasn't even here. Whatever. Yeah. Then there's, the next thing I have is about the inspection. There's, like, a room inspection. Anything before that on your end? Yeah. Bo comes Great. to visit. And then, right. like, yeah, Bo comes to visit, and like, oh yeah, a, that was I was just like kind of like fucking done with. For some reason, I'm fucking done with. I hate Bo for some reason. All right, <laughs> he's like fine. He um, is, he continues as a man like, proxy. I mean, as far as we know, he's been like semi upstanding. Well, he's also like been um, true to Ruby. You know, he's not dated other people. Okay, all right, and like he's at a co-ed school. Great, he's a sportsman. He's very popular. He's a sportsman. He's a sportsman. He's great. He's Bo sportsman. You can. <laughs> you rest your case. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know. Like, he's. I don't know. He's fine. And he's like, yeah. My parents are yeah, fucking jag off. I was just. I don't care. Jag- like, I'm a jag off. Also, immediately, like when he met her in the last book, he was like, "Your sister sucks." Like. I really, you know what I think it is? I can't get over that their first sexual event where it was a lot of Ruby saying no and him persisting. And it made my skin crawl. So I guess I hate Bo. Um, right. And when he came to, it was just them, their stupid love and like going on walks. And I was like, so they had a, a picnic <laughs> yeah, and, she, and uh, Ruby <laughs> you was, talk about it. Ruby was trying to be like extra um, proper. Yeah. So that she was like, we can't, like, we just have to be cool. Feel like eyes Because, like, me. I think he, like, tickled her and she was like, eyes on me. So then they walk up to the Claiborne mansion and he's like, wow, that is a fucking big house. <laughs> and she's like, cool, let's get back to the dorm now. That was my fridge, if you heard that. So if you <laughs> want to send me a new refrigerator. Scary, it was a scary ghost. Please email it, it to. It was a Civil War ghost. VCs, pieces, podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> Can you download a refrigerator? It's 2022. I don't know. Jeff Bezos? Figure it out. Alexa. Figure it out. Elon Musk. No, don't talk to her. She's offline. Okay. Great. Um. Anyway, we're talking about Bo. So, on the way back from the mansion, Bo's like, oh, do you see this path in the woods? And she's like, oh my God, yeah, there's a path. And he's like, let's go walk it. And she's like, I don't know, Bo. And then he's like, are you telling me you never walked this path in before? In the woods. And she was like, oh, my God, no. And <laughs> what is it? Oh, my God, no. And then they end up at like, oh, my God, it's a stream that's it's a, a waterfall. It's, <laughs> why are they? It's so fucking French about everything. A waterfall. A waterfall. Tombe de l'eau. It's got uh, water phones. And so then they do a bone in the woods, they and she's like, like ah, w- my screams were almost as I'm loud. Do, I'm as, doing a Cummins. Almost as loud as the falls of the tiny river. In my vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, Ruby gets, she's like, bang, bang. And she gets Thanks back in, and they um, find out that there's going to be an inspection. Yeah, and it's very sus that Giselle is not concerned at all. No, she was concerned. Giselle was not fucking concerned about this. Giselle was concerned. Giselle was not con- Why would I write that? I don't know. Why would I? She You're was like, wrong. Mm, whatever. You're fucking wrong. Also, did Ruby not think that Giselle would take whatever the fuck she had in her and put it in Ruby's room? Because she 100 did that. Mm. She 100 did that, dear listener. She took a rum, a bottle of rum, and put it in Ruby's room. The end. The end! You can put that book down. We're done talking about it. It's inconsequential. Because she was like, no, oh, it's just a room inspection. Whatever. And it's very satisfied. Her room is very clean. It passes so many inspection points. You, you're flipping. You're looking. And I'm about to slap that book out of your hand. I'm about to you slap better not. I mean, I'm done talking. Aha! Page 336. When I arrived at the quad, I found all the girls in a frenzy. Even Giselle. Hmm. I don't believe it. Oh no! 
Read the book. I'm assaulting me. Uh, anyway. So yeah, there you go. Ah. <gasps> <laughs> She slapped the booketh out of my handeths. Anyway. And rude Kathleen. That uh, is uh, actually eclipsed by Ruby getting the barfs side eye. Yeah, so Miss Ironwood's like, oh my god, rum, now you have to clean bathrooms every oh Saturday god. for a month. Right. And then she's like, oh my god, someone stopped up the toilet and I felt sick. Well, first of all, then, she's like, I don't give a shit, I'll, I'll clean, whatever, whatever. Yeah, she, and then everyone else is like, oh my god, you're not mad? That's kind of badass. And then she's like, I think I got sick from all the cleaning chemicals. Yeah, like, uh, I was like, uh oh, random morning pukes. We had a prego. Repeat, we have a prego. <laughs> That's what I wrote. And the nurse, she's like, I have to tell all these people. No, you don't. That's not you how don't. HIPAA works. No. I mean, is there HIPAA in a it's, private look, school in listen, 1964? <laughs> listener, HIPAA didn't exist until the 1990s. Woof. FYI. So, yeah, she did have to tell everyone. She's like, I gotta tell the school, I gotta tell your parents. She's like, even though you just said you weren't feeling well and you're, you said your boobs look a little bit bigger, like that, I'm, I'm a scientist, doctor. I assign you a pregnancy. You <laughs> Here you go. It's been prescribed. Yep. Basically that. Uh, so then, like, Ruby gets kicked out of Greenwood the same day the nurse suspects that she's pregnant. She was like, I just, like, I have to tell all these people. And you'll figure... And the nurse is like, maybe you'll abort it. Cool. Yeah. I thought that was a great... Progressive. She was like, whatever you guys want to do. If you want to get the fuck rid of it. <laughs> and then... If I can say that. But then she's like, please don't. And she's like, well, if someone finds out that I didn't tell you... I'm like, fucking did, fired. Like, I'm going to get fired. And she was like, all right, well, I guess I'm fucking sick of getting people fired for being nice to me, so... Also, Giselle's like, wait, you get to leave and I don't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's and like a, Daphne arranges an abortion. Yeah, she gets, like, she, like, packs her stuff the second after the nurse, and then gets in a limo. Her prescribed she, the nurse was like, here you go. Here's a prescription for your fetus. Here you go. Um, right when she gets home, Daphne, like, comes cl- clomping in, like, <laughs> 20 minutes later, and she's like, I just made you an appointment with this upstanding I, physician. I always thought it would be Giselle and not you. I don't know, which was... <laughs> And she's it like, was such a delightfully backhanded compliment. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not the one that was gonna fuck up, but you fucked up. That's so good. A um, villain doing villainy shit. <laughs> so she immediately sends Here's her the, off the, to the clinic. They arrive, and Ruby's like, "This place is disgusting. This is a back alley, and everyone. It's a close. literal back alley. It is. It is. And then she's like, Which uh, is "True to the time, friends. For sure. But like." But they got money. I also don't think it... It's weird. It doesn't track because, like, how would Daphne know a disgusting, dirty doctor? I'm sure she was, like, who... She was, like, I'm bored. Do my enterprises. Who knows the grossest abortion doctor? I don't know because, like, he made it seem like they, like, knew each other. He was doing her a favor, but probably that, yeah. Wait, hold on. Me too. (coughs) So... So, you know, Ruby's, like, kind of ready for this abortion. She's like, okay, cool. But then she's like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. She's like, this place is dirty. It's gross. She's like, there were tools just, like, in a vat of water. Yeah, she's like, I gotta fucking go. And she runs out, hops back in the limo, and she's like, drive me home. And then she sees a sign. It was just like, New Orleans this way. Huma? 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 This way. And she was like, stop the limo! Yeah! And she's like, go home. I'm walking. And he was like, okay. Uh, I guess so. And then an actual not creeper truck driver picks her up and drives her there. Yeah, he's like, you remind me of my daughter. And he's like, who? I feel like this is a callback to a n- that I'm forgetting. Who was like, tried to run away, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I guess I'm going back home. He's like, that's the right choice. Oh, it was, oh, uh, it the, was right. Christy. It was Christy. Was it Christy? Maybe. I don't know. Listen or tell me who I'm forgetting. About. I don't know. Anyways. Um, they're hiding some, back to some swamp. Love it, love it, love in it. a fucking train station. So he talks her ear off because he's been so lonely on the road. I know. And he was like, cool. Yeah. He was like, oh, that's crazy. But like, I ran away from home one time too. And like, I get it. Parents are a drag. <laughs> the absolute motherfucking second Ruby gets home, grandpa dies. Yep. She calls Paul and he's like, sick. I'll be right there. And like literally shows up. And then she's like, I want to go to the, the shack. And he's like, you don't maybe want to like, go there. You know, he's like to a thousand percent right now. He's like still digging holes looking for this mystery fucking treasure. After however many 
years? I don't know. We, they skipped a year. Great. Aww. So he's still been looking for the buried treasure, and then they find him swinging a sack over his head. And he's like, I fucking found it! And then he goes, just goes and dies in the bayou. He's like, ah, splash! And then they have to fish him out. And the sack was, uh... Varmints? Rats? Something. Full of rusty cans. Rusty cans! <laughs> Ladies and, then, and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Rusty, rusty cans. cans. And my note was, that's another V-Busy day. <laughs> like in the last book. Like all of this happened in the same day. Like she went to the nurse. Nurse is like, I'm so, prescribing you a baby. And then she goes Miss back Iron is like, ha, 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 goodbye. Gets and, a Daphne. And then she's like, abortion. gets in a limo. Goes, Nina's like, are you pregnant with child girl? And then she's like, Daphne's like, you're going to go see this doctor and then she fucking gets in the limo for a long time goes with the doctor she's there for a hot minute she's like i, I, I gotta get out of here it's sketchy as fuck gets limo back driver. in the limo walking for hours and truck then driver. truck driver brings her huge all right the paul paul picks her up grandparent freaks out splashes in the swamp and dies that's a that's like a that, 28 hour day that is a day she's like really full of these jam-packed these full days okay oh um, Paul actually is like, let's give it the old Dollinganger try. <laughs> Dollinganger. <laughs> take a drink. You take a drink. <laughs> <coughs> um, I didn't know Paul played harmonica. Yeah, it was weird. By the by. Um, so yeah, when Ruby starts showing, everyone assumes it's Paul's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, Why did I write Cajun wedding on a swamp raft? I don't know, but I wrote like... Oh, as soon as Paul's, who's just trying to convince her to just marry him, who cares, whatever. He's just like, whatever, just marry me, who cares, whatever. Like, it's my like, parents will like, never admit that we're related. And she's like, but we both fucking but know we're related. We but we are. are. Like, actually related. As a matter of fact, we'll admit it. Yeah. Yeah. Ruby's like, I, I know no one knows. Yeah. But we are. <laughs> it's not about the people knowing. He's like, but I still would like to do a fucking thaw on you. And she's like, no. So he, he, like, he'll come by all the time. He's like, here's baby things. And she is, she does a grand mare. She does a weave-in. She does a sell things. Hi, oh, hey. And um, just as Ruby is in the ninth month, a hurricane is full. A cat. big old hurricane. A big old hurricane. Of whence we have not known for many, many moons down in the bow. Like a category five. They it's don't say category. that. But if you know about weather, that's the categories. The category. It's the fastest birth scene ever. Yeah, big old hurricane and she goes into labor. Boop. Like, apparently, like, fucking, like, roofs are getting ripped off of shit. She's like, we gotta get to the basement. It's like, there's no time. Like, I'm just picturing, like, a, like, uh, like, shingle shrapnel flying through the air. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Paul like, just has to, like, help her deliver this just baby. Just, like, catch the baby. That she names Pearl. In the mist? Um, because you, she had a dream. You can see here, I, for some reason my notes get cut off. I think I wrote <laughs> Beautiful Perfect Child. And then that was it for me. Beautiful Perfect Child. Yeah, so um, in, in VC fashion, uh, the child is perfect. Beautiful, and... beautiful. She, apparently she had a dream in which the baby's name was Pearl, whatever. Oh, God. Uh, Giselle writes to her, and she's like... <laughs> Bo's in love with some important. Well, like Giselle has actually like written her one other time. She's like, I can't believe you just like snuck out to the bayou. I got your address from Paul. Is it crazy being pregnant? Bye. And then after she has the baby, she's like, so Bo is in France. Is in love with some important person's some daughter. And I think like Giselle actually misses her at this point too. She's like, it's not as fun fucking with Daphne by myself. But I think that's just like, you know, probably giving us false hope, absolutely, as it is wont to do. And then Ruby sees a marsh hawk and knows that Grandma will direct her to the right choices at the end. That's actually not factually accurate. I have read the next one. That is not correct. Oh, <laughs> no. Hashtag spoiler alert. So there we are. And, and again, in true VC slash Neerman fashion, it's just and done. Okay. She poops out a baby. And... This one ends in a cliffhanger. Because she's like, will I marry Paul? Or will I not marry Paul? Will what I will I do? I don't know. What will I do? But baby Pearl is perfect. 
pearl fix, if you will. <laughs> I will not choose yes, to you do will. that. Yes, oh, you will. I will. I'll you take will. it. Yeah. I'll lay back and take it. Yeah. Um, my consent is questionable. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> oh, hi. Um, <laughs> Sparrow's giving nuzzins. She is nuzzling on my nubbins. She's blind. She got to oh, figure out what you got. God. She's not blind. It was. I was really uncomfortable with a lot of the Lewis stuff. Yeah, it was gross. Until he was like, "Cool," and then like he wrote her a letter later, being like, "Hey, it's wicked cool here. I got some stuff done." I don't know. I know, but it was like, "Let me honk a titty." Yeah, this is how blind people see. I know. I know that happened, but then he was like, "Hey, I'm getting a vibe that you're in love with someone else," and she's like, "Yeah," and he was like, "Fair." I would like to still be your friend. I don't know. I don't know. He didn't try to honk after that. All right, you're right. I'm basing everything on Christopher back in the day when he was just like, it's fine, Kathy. And he's like, ugh. And then Philip being like, it's fine. Don't worry about doing anything. Don't worry. We're just going to be cool. The super creeper. Yeah. This We just invented a new type. The super creeper. Did we invent is, it? <laughs> is Paul a super creeper? No. He's not. Paul? I don't know. I haven't read the book that you just read. I'm just saying, what we know right now is that... It's fine. And especially even in the first... Especially and even in the first one when he was like, we'll just live... No one knows we can just live on my oily land. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. There were... I don't see anyone else, Ruby. They were 15. Can you imagine that it probably was like a hard information to take? Give me a hard 15. Uh, what's the next book called? All That Glitters. All That Glitters. All That Glitters. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I spat on you. <laughs> you didn't, but it would have been worth it. I was thinking it was fine. I didn't mean to miss you. Oh. <laughs> you didn't mean to miss my pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, you just came so close to hitting your head on that couch, like, couch arm. That was hilarious. What am I going to do? Not fall down? No, you can fall down. I was just letting you know, like, I was panicked for a second. I was like, <gasps> here we go. I'll put a pillow there. It's not. Okay. It's okay. Uh, b- uh, fucking book. All the glitters. All that glitters is next. All that glitters in your mist. Uh- <laughs> Glitter in the mist. <laughs> if you uh, know the right person. Um,. Misty Glitter. They call me Misty Glitters. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Misty Glitters. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, goodbye. Goodbye, dear listener. Thanks for listening to the Species Species Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Technical support was provided by Boo and Matt. Thanks for answering all of my stupid questions. Video wizardry provided by Colburn. Thanks for taking on our very special projects. Music is Dust in My Attic by Broke MC, used under Creative Commons license. Email us at speciespeciespodcast at gmail.com with your thoughts or comments. You can also follow us on Instagram. We are at Podcast. New episodes are released every other Friday to give you time to read along. In the meantime, take a seat on the gallery, uh, yeah, gallery. Yeah, ignore your they spoiled sister, and uh, the team. Oh. 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 O